In this video, I'm going to cover the nomenclature of coordination compounds. So coordination compounds are ionic compounds. They just have contain a complex ion, either a cation or an anion. So remember that when we named ionic compounds before, um, that involved naming the cation and naming the anion, since all ionic con compounds contain a cation and an anion. So we do the same thing here. We name the cation and we name the anion. So um, we have to determine the name of the non-complex ion. So generally in a coordination compound, either the cation or the anion will be complex, but not both. Um, determine the ligand names and list them in alphabetical order. So when we look at the complex, we can generally break it apart to see where the central metal coordinating ion is and um, which components are the ligands. Uh, we then determine the name of the metal cation, um, which is a transition metal that is in some oxidation state. And so we have to look at the charges of the ligands and the charges of the, an, uh, of the ions outside of the complex to determine what the oxidation state is of the, um, the metal coordinating ion, the transition metal in the middle. Uh, number four, we name the complex ion. So after we name each ligand alphabetically, we add a prefix in front of each ligand to indicate the number found in the complex ion. So if there's two ligands or three ligands or four ligands, we have to add a prefix to indicate the number of, li of, of that type of ligand. Um, and we follow with the name of the metal cation. And finally, in five, write the name of the cation followed by the name of the anion. So here is a table of uh, common ligands and what their name is in a complex ion. So uh, if we can look at the formula and see that it has bromide ligands or chloride or hydroxide, if these ions are part of the um, ligands, part of the complex ion, then they have a different name when they are in the complex. So the anion Br- minus by itself is called bromide. Um, but in the complex ion, it, it's called bromo. And Cl minus is chloro, hydroxo, cyano, nitro, oxalato, ethylene, diamine, tetra, acetato. Uh, oops. Water, there are, these are anions. So um, this part of the table, all of these ligands have a negative charge. Uh, these are all negative one. The oxalate ion is a negative two, and the EDTA ion is a negative four charge. So these are all anion ligands. Um, and generally, ligands are either have a negative charge, like these, or they're neutral molecules, like these down here. So water can be a ligand, or an ammonia molecule, or carbon monoxide, or ethylene diamine. And when these are ligands in a complex ion, they have different names. Water is called aqua. Ammonia is called amine. Carbon monoxide is carbonyl. Ethylene diamine is still ethylene diamine. Um, and finally, we have to name the metal, the transition metal, it, which is always part of one of these complex ions. So the metal um, generally is has an A-T-E ending. We start with the name of the metal, and we add an A-T-E ending. Um, but some of the names are actually uh, the name in the anionic complex, the name in the complex ion, um, is uh, more... So many of the metals, um, we start with the name of the metal and we just add an A-T-E ending. So for example, chromium becomes chromate. We would drop the I-U-M and add an A-T-E, chromium, chromate. Um, cobalt, we don't drop anything and we add the A-T-E on the end. So we still add A-T-E to chromium and cobalt, but uh, cobalt becomes cobaltate um, and the A-T-E is added to the end of cobalt. Um, so some of these metals, the name in the complex is just the name of the element, 
uh, with ATE either substituting some letters or added at the end. But with some of these elements, the name of the um, the name in the complex is uh, more similar to that element's symbol on the periodic table than to the name of that element. So we call the element copper, but remember its symbol on the periodic table is Cu. Um, and this is uh, due to its Latin name. Gold, we call it gold, but it, on the periodic table its symbol is Au. We call it iron, but on the periodic table its symbol is Fe. So um, some of these elements are going to have different names in a complex than they do when they're just metals, when they're elements. So in order to not be caught off guard, make sure that you have this table handy so you can see that it's not iron, it's ferrate. It's not lead, it's plumbate. Um, and silver is argentate, uh, and tin uh, is SN, right, so stannate. So some of these uh, metals are going to have different names in the complex, and that name you'll see is actually more similar to their symbol on the periodic table than it is to the name that we use, tin, for example, instead of SN. So if we were given this formula and we were asked to name this compound, these are the steps that we would take to name the compound. So the first step is to identify the cation and the anion and name of the simple ion. So generally in a complex we see that there's the thing that's in brackets is usually the complex ion. Well it's always the complex ion. So here in brackets we see that this is the complex ion and outside of the brackets we'll have a simple ion. In this case the simple ion, the monatomic ion, comes uh, on the right side of the brackets, which indicates that this is the anion. Because remember, in an ionic compound, the cation always comes first and the anion always comes second. So these, uh, this over here indicates that these Cl atoms are anions. Um, and so t the first step is to identify in this ionic compound which part is the cation which is always the first part, in this case the complex, and which part is the anion. Now the, cat, uh, the complex doesn't have to be a cation. The complex can also be an anion and it doesn't have to come first. The complex can come second and there can be um, a simple ion on the left side of the brackets which would indicate that the simple ion was the cation and the complex was an anion. But in this case we have the complex first. Okay, so we can break it apart into its two pieces by just separating the complex from this simple ion here, this part. And remember, we whenever we have the subscript 2, um, that indicates that there's two of this ion. So we'll move the two out front, so we have plus 2 C L. And we know what Cl is. It's, it's chloride, right? We've seen Cl before, and we know the charge on Cl because it's a halogen. It has a minus one charge. So we can put the minus one charge up here, 2Cl minus, and that shows us that we have a two, two minus charge, that in this compound there's two negative charges. So when we break these two pieces apart, this part from this part, when we break them into their components, we don't necessarily know the charge on the complex, but if I know what the charge on the anion is, 2 minus, then I know what the charge on this part is because in the compound there's no charge, which means that whatever the negative charge is, it must balance the positive charge and they must cancel out. And I know that if I have a 2 minus charge, then uh, this part must be 2 plus. So I can put 2 plus over here. So. All right, I broke apart the cation and the anion. So whenever I name any ionic compound, the whole the naming the compound just involves naming this part and naming this part, naming the cation and naming the anion. Now, that's obviously a bigger task now that we're talking about complex ions. Before, when we were naming the cation, it was usually just sodium chloride. It wasn't too hard. Now we're looking at this, and we're trying to name this as a cation. This is still chloride. So here's the simple ion. It comes outside of the brackets, and anything outside of the brackets 
just has the same rules that we've already seen. So Cl- minus has a name that we're familiar with, chloride. This thing, that's the, that's the piece that we're going to work on, is naming the complex. Okay, so first we recognize that a complex has pieces. It has this piece, Cr, it has this piece, H2O, and there's five of them, and it has this piece, Cl. So there are three different pieces in this particular complex. The Cr is the uh, coordinating ion. It's the transition metal that sits in the middle that all of the ligands are attached to. So we're going to have to figure out how to name this part. And these are the ligands. There's five H2Os that are stuck to Cr, and there's one Cl that's stuck to Cr. All of these six components, five of these and one of these, six components together are stuck to Cr. So we have to give each ligand, this and this, a name, and then list them in alphabetical order. So let's go back to our list. We have H2O and Cl. Oops, this is going to hang out here with us for a minute. H2O is aqua. Cl minus is chloro. So we have aqua and chloro. All right, so H H2O is aqua, Cl minus is chloro, so aqua and chloro. Um, name the metal ion. Okay, so we know that this is aqua and we have five of them, so we're going to have to use that five somewhere. Um, we have one chloro. And now what's the name of this? It's Cr, so it's chromium. So let's go back up here again and check. Oh, I think we're going to have written on it. Cr chromium becomes chromate. So uh, in, the, in the complex, we're going to call chromium chromate. So here we have, if we're naming this ion, we have to figure out what is the charge on the Cr. So I know that the charge on the whole complex, this whole thing, is 2 plus. And aqua, H2O, has no charge, it's neutral. So H2O doesn't affect the charge of the complex, it's being neutral. And Cl is Cl minus. So this has no, provides no charge to the complex. This provides a minus 1 charge to the complex. And overall the complex is 2 plus. So that shows me that if this is 0, this is minus 1, and when I put this together, plus, and this together, plus, whatever this is, it equals plus 2. So this must be 3 plus. Right, so I have 3 plus plus 0 plus negative 1 equals 2 plus. So my chromium, by looking at the charge on the ligands, and I can figure out the charge on the ligands by looking them up in the table, they're either anions with a negative charge or they're neutral, and then I just add up all the charges of the ligands in the complex, and look at the total charge on the complex, which I figure out by looking at the, the charge on the counter ion. And that can help me figure out what is the charge on this metal ion. So now I know the charge is 3 plus. So this is chromium 3. So in the complex, it's going to be chromate 3. Okay, so now we name the complex ion by adding the prefixes to indicate the number of each ligand. So there's five of these and there's one of these. We need to indicate that. Followed by the name of each ligand, followed by the name of the metal ion. Okay, so put them in alphabetical order. Aqua comes first, and then chloro, and then the name of, of this ion. So we're just we're still just trying to name this cation, right? So it doesn't go this and then this and then this. We name the ligands first, and then we put the the metal at the very end. 
So there's five H2Os. So the prefix for five is penta. So we have penta. And now the name of the H2O is aqua. So it looks kind of weird, but we have two A's in a row. Penta aqua. So now we've named this. Now we have to name this chloro. We don't have to indicate the one. We would just write chloro. All right, so now we've indicated both of the ligands. Now we named the metal ion, which is chromate 3. So this whole long name is the name of this cation right here. And now I have to add the name of the anion. So then I leave a space and then I write the name of the anion. Chloride. Uh, oops, I skipped this part. Um, I was only supposed to name the, the cation here. So um, we name the cation, we name the anion. This is the name of the whole compound. Okay, so um, depending on um, the, the system of nomenclature that's being used, whether it's an old system or a new system, um, the names of the ligands might be somewhat different, and the names of the metals might be somewhat different. So this one might also, we, might also be called chromium-3 um, and not chromate-3, and sometimes chloro is seen as chlorido. So there are different systems that give the uh, ligands and the metals slightly different names. Uh, but the general set of rules is the same. We just, instead of going with chromate 3, some systems would have us go with chromium 3. Um, instead of calling it chloro, some systems would have us call it chlorido. So the uh, systems are slightly different, which is, of course, frustrating and irritating um, but they are if, if you see that in a question or in the book it's just because they updated the system of naming and we're in the period where both systems are still kind of being used before the old one is phased out and the new one is phased in so the new system is this system that uses chloro and uses chromate instead of chromium so this is the way that we would name this ion using the new rules of, uh, of nomenclature for coordination compounds. Okay, let's look at another example. All right, so name K3FeCN6. So again, the first step is to break this apart into its components. This is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds have cations and anions. We can see that there's this part here outside of the brackets, and generally what comes first is a cation. So this, this is a cation outside of the brackets. And then over here, inside of the brackets, since this comes last, this is on the right side of the formula, this is the anion. So before we saw a complex that was a cation, and now we're seeing a complex ion that's an anion. So let's break this one apart. We have K3, which means that that 3 is going to come out front, and K, we've seen before, K has a plus 1 charge, so 3K plus. So when we break this apart and write the complex over here, CN6, we have to figure out what its charge is. But I know that K is plus, and there's three of them. So there's three pluses on the outside of the brackets. So that means that inside the brackets, this anion must have a charge of three minus. OK, so uh, next is to give each ligand a name and list them in alphabetical order. There's only one ligand in this case. Uh, there are, well, one type of ligand, I should say. There are six of them. 
So we would say the coordination number on this ion is six. There are six ligands. So the geometry of this ion is octahedral. When I have six ligands, they uh, are, are arranged in an octahedral pattern, in so, so a series of perpendicular lines. Um, so now we have to see what is CN called. Let's go back to our list. CN is called cyano. So we have cyano. Name the metal ion. All right, so we, we already know what this is. This is called potassium, so we can just name that right away. Potassium. And we're trying to name the anion now. We know that it has a cyano in it. Now what's the metal ion? Well, cyano is C, N, minus. I have six of them, so that means total here I have a six minus. So if this is six minus, and the overall charge on the compound is three minus, or on this part of the ion, the anion is three minus, then what must the charge be on Fe to take minus six down to minus three? Well, it must be three plus. So three plus plus six minus equals three minus. So if we're naming the metal ion, we again have to make sure that we're going to name it with the right name. This is Fe is iron, but we call it ferrate in the complex. So this is iron but we call it ferrate 3. All right, now name the complex ion by adding prefixes to indicate the number of each ligand followed by the name of each ligand followed by the name of the metal ion. Okay, so we name the ligands first. And how many of them there are? And then we put them in alphabetical order if there's more than one ligand. And then we name the metal. There's only one ligand, cyano. There are six of them. So we would call this hex is the prefix for six. But we can't, uh, putting H-E-X and then cyano, hex cyano, the X and the C, it doesn't flow right. So generally after an X, we put an A. So it's hexa. cyano and that means six cyanos and now we name the metal uh, ferrate three and now this is hexa cyano ferrate three it's the name of this complex so we put it all together the potassium comes first because that's the complex is an anion, it comes second. Potassium hexa cyano ferrate three. Here is a table that shows the um, the name of the prefix that indicates the number of the uh, ligand that we have. So remember we had five water, so I called it penta. Five is penta. We had six cy um, cyanos, so I called it hexa. Hexa cyano, penta aqua. Um, and here are the, the prefix names for the others. Mono, di, sometimes it's called bis depending on the situation. Tri or tris, tetra or tetrakis. Um, and some of the others, hepta, octa, nona, deca, undeca, and dodeca. So these numerical prefixes indicate how many of each ligand we have. We're not going to see anything that has more than six. So we're, and we don't name mono. Remember, when there's only one of them, we don't name it, we don't put a mono in front. So we'll see di, 
ta, tri, tetra, penta, and hexa are the, the numbers, the prefix names that we'll use.